The following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. So get ready, nerds, because we're doing a double feature today. Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Salty Nerd Podcast. I'm your host, Salty Nerd. In today's episode, we're going to be doing a double feature review talking about Psycho Goreman and Willie's Wonderland. And I am joined, as always, by my illustrious and fantastic panel of nerds. Starting with the Barbarian Space Viking, Matt Vader, 74. What's up, dude? Bro. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I got two pages. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. I hate for these fucking movies, all right? I can't wait. All right. I'm also joined by the Ambassador of Estrogen, Jude. Hi. Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. <laughs> Are you ready for the truckload of salt that's going to be coming from your side I of the mean, table? I mean, I guess. Are you blonde yet? Okay. <laughs> no. You're going to get in trouble, You're going to get bro. punched in the neck. I have yeah. to stop you so yeah. I don't stab you. Yeah. Go to saltynerdstore.com, pick up that t shirt that Jude's wearing right now. <laughs> I'm also joined by uh, Matthew Kadish, author extraordinaire. So I want to apologize for my camera. Uh, <laughs> we had some technical difficulties and we're using our backup. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to look as good as the rest of you guys. He's got Aww. some JJ Abram light uh, infusion yeah, going I, on. I, I got some, some cloudiness going on, <laughs> on this camera. We'll be all right. So we'll pl please forgive me. You use uh, the um, as focus, God focus spoke on the filters. Other just yeah. keep the camera focused on Jude. We'll be okay. <laughs> God damn. All right, guys. Like I said, we're going to be talking about two awesome, kind of awesome movies. Uh, uh, first and foremost, we're going to be beginning with Psycho Goreman. Are we doing that one first? Yeah. Who has the synopsis? Jude, you ready to go? I do. Hit us. 2020 Psycho Goreman. Not rated. With a runtime of one hour, 35 minutes, with no budget. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think you're brought into the box, gentlemen? So, the $6.99 we, we rented it with. I don't know. I have no idea. Did this hit theaters? Uh, I don't think it did. No, no that this was like a straight to streaming. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll I just know. tell you. $200,000. $12,000. $82,000. $82, nice. Okay. Okay, so the synopsis. After winning a game of crazy ball against her brother Luke, Mimi makes him dig his own grave. <laughs> While digging, they discover a capsule containing an ancient evil monster and unwittingly uh, resurrect him. They name him Psycho Gorman, or PG for short. Using a magical amulet that amulet that controls him, they force the monster to obey their commands and accidentally a attract intergalactic assassins to their neighborhood. In the final battle, which pits the siblings against each other, good fights evil in an epic game of crazy ball, and PG learns what love is. <laughs> After defeating the space lady that imprisoned him, he takes his new power, love, with him and uses it to destroy the world, but not Mimi. Meanwhile, all of this is being monitored by beings on space TV. Okay. Um, can somebody else, can somebody describe why we watched this movie? Whose idea was this? Kadish? Were, were you the one that were like, yeah, so um, basically this is a new release and also uh, Jude's friend. Tom. Uh, Conspiracy Tom. Oh, Tom? Uh, uh, is this his fault? That bastard yeah. so, so oh, like he man. showed us the trailer for this a while i was back. supposed to watch it with him but i watched it with you guys <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so so like we we watched the trailer and the trailer looked hilarious and, and in, fact, really in fact we it showed did. the trailer to you it guys did. It yeah good. yeah the trailer did look good and so because it was a new release and because it was you know a good trailer we decided to check it out for the podcast okay so my opening thoughts um going into this i had no idea what to expect but i did what i was intrigued by the trailer um the premise is funny. Mm -hmm. The uh, <laughs> the ridiculous costumes are humorous, and you know, they're, I mean, they're cheap, but they're fun. Mm -hmm. So I was I was on board with it, but I I could not get into this movie for two main reasons. One, Mimi, Mimi yeah, killed it for me. The girl, and and, and yeah, the girl, the the little girl, super Look, annoying. I have no hate towards the actress who plays her. I don't I don't want to act like I'm like bashing on some nine year old chick who's an actor or whatever. Like that's not what I'm doing. I'm saying the direction and the writing for Mimi oh, killed this movie. Terrible. For me. It, it was grating. I, I've never wanted to hurt a nine year old before. <laughs> now I have. So I, I actually really liked. The, of course the you girl. did. Of course. <laughs> I think it was intentional with it her was, character. It was 100%. She was either go, you were either going to love her yeah. or absolutely loathe her. Yes. There's, there's nothing to love. there. <laughs> she's 100% annoying. She might be. First of all, 
She's the heckin' best. She's probably yeah, yeah, worse yeah. of a personality <laughs> than Psycho Gorman himself, who is like this murderous rampageous but, 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 alien. That, that's kind of the point, though, is like, <laughs> like half the characters in this movie are awful. Yeah. yeah. And I love it. Half? <laughs> yeah, half. I mean, there, there's some good characters in this movie. There's no good characters. The other thing. Movie. The brother, Luke. He was Luke, the mom. Was like, he's a sap. He's just, yeah, he's a freaking. Okay, that's the other. That's, that's a perfect segue. The other thing that took me out of this movie was how every freaking dude in this movie, and I know Jude's going to roll your eyes at me, but like every single dude in this movie is a freaking pansy cuck oh the the dad the dad annoyed the he's, shit he's, out of he, me he might as well have had a fucking Ugh. soy fucking see i love the dad uh, what I he was my favorite character in in, in this movie. <laughs> all right well tell me how uh, i don't understand so so like uh so he he is a very kind of like awful like character in in the sense that like he's just not a good person uh, but at the beginning, you, you know, the first time we see him, he's in his son's room. The son says, dad, are monsters real? And he's like, well, when you think about it, aren't humans the real monsters? <laughs> and and it, it, it was such a flippant response that at first I thought that the dad was going to be kind of like the smart ass kind of like, you know, a good dad. But he's kind of like, you know, wisecracking, smart ass dad. And then as the movie goes on, you begin to realize that he's this like lazy deadbeat. He's so worthless. Yeah, oh, he's like, completely But that's useless. the joke. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fact that like. Like as it goes on, like it's revealed just how bad of a father he is, <laughs> and 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 you can and you can see parallels between him and Mimi, the, the little girl. Yeah, where they're, they're they're both like incredibly like selfish and stupid and just like awful people. And in fact, there's a there's a scene at the end where he's kind of giving a pep talk to his daughter, <laughs> and 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 he's like, you know, when I was in fifth grade, this creepy old man asked me to come in the back of his van and look at his baseball cards, and I did it. And he had the most awesome collection of baseball cards I've ever seen. It was the best day of my life. <laughs> you know? It was a subversion of expectations. Yeah, right? you know, like, like, you, like you expect it to be a story about him getting molested, but but you know he's using this like stupid story about like him doing something dumb. Yeah. Uh, to inspire his daughter to do something equally dumb, which is basically unleash this this terrible monster on the universe. <laughs> I I just. I couldn't get on board with it, especially the father irritated me because I'm just I'm tired of seeing dopey dads. I didn't who... like a single character of this family. No, neither did I. Not one. Yeah. What I'm about with the you. boy she had the crush on that she had turned into a, hu a the, huge the, brain? The, the brain thing? No. <laughs> oh my god. There's nothing. That was hilarious. That was you to explain what that was. Yeah, because there's no context for this. It's a brand new movie. Okay, so, so she is using this magical amulet that. Um, Psycho Gorman has to obey her every command because she has the amulet. Yeah. So she has a crush on this boy and she wants him to like her. And she doesn't say like, turn him into a, a horrible monster or something. I, I think she legit just says like, I want him to like me. Well, Psycho Gorman was like, uh, you know, I, I helped the, the prince of Zygor, uh, you, you know, uh, get his true love by, by using my magic to, you know, uh, do s some type of weird spell. And uh, and so he was like, "Do you want me to do this to this boy?" And she's like, "Yeah, okay." Yeah. And, and it turns out that like the magic just turns him into this giant mutant brain with uh -huh. like you know tentacles. tentacles and for and the eyeballs. like, he never becomes a boy again. For the rest of the movie, they he's even just this that. brain like walking around. He he goes and has dinner with his fa with his family, and they're just like, "Oh, eat up." Yeah. No no one acknowledges that he's like this horrible mutant <laughs> brain now. And that's the joke. Yeah, it's a joke. This this, this thing was like, what did I write? <laughs> Power Rangers on meth. Thank you. That's Thank what you. I wrote. Yes. yes. There's That's nothing. Apt. There's nothing redeeming about this. Yeah. Movie. Well, the the filmmakers said that they were going for a Marvel meets Troma vibe. <laughs> Which, well, I don't know what they... Troma is. Troma pictures like uh, the Toxic Avenger, oh. like, like those low budget horror movie type type deals. Nailed okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm with Vader. It was Except very it wasn't Toxic fun. Avenger. It wasn't fun. I didn't have fun, fun with this movie. It was a chore to get through. I there were some moments where I was like, "This is very creative and clever." Mm -hmm. But it wasn't enough to sell the whole movie to I, me. I wanted it to be better than it was. I wanted it to be cheesier. Like, I would have <laughs> rather them, like, amped up the cheese factor because that would have made it funnier. I just, it was grating. You're right yeah. about that. Um, and I just don't think it was successful to me. I needed at least one person to root for. It was, yeah. I, I wanted nobody to win in this movie. Psycho I, you're I, supposed to root for Psycho Gorman. I, yeah. I, I didn't care. He was funny, but the chick that was controlling him was annoying. So that it killed it for me. He totally had an arc. <laughs> he learned the power of love. He learned the by power the end. of love. And, and then he, he just went on a murdering uh, rampage. And, uh, 
He <laughs> he loved hunky boys. Oh, that, that, that was my one of my favorite scenes where where she gives him a magazine to kind of pass the time. And he's like, and she's, I do not she, like hunky she's boys. Like, oh, look at the hunky boys in this magazine. He's like, and I he, do not like hunky boys. He's like, I don't care for hunky are. boys. And then like he immediately starts questioning his sexuality when he sees this and the, ripped the, like the shirtless camera, man, and he's the, like, or do I? <laughs> The camera zooms in on his face and you just see his eyes and he's like, or do I? Yeah, it was a, there's some clever, funny moments in this. Yeah. One of the ones that I, I didn't laugh through most of this movie, except for this one freaking point actually caught me off guard. And I, I straight up started laughing is when the, uh, they're at the park or something like that. And the police come. And of course, the psycho cop, the, the two cops are dudes who I are the most my freaking too. pansy ass Three cops idiots. ever. And the, he runs up to Cycle Goreman and he's like, you will, you will bask in your own death or whatever, whatever nonsense he says to him. And he turns him into like this shuck of a, of a zombie. And the whole time the cop's still conscious underneath. And he's like walking around like a zombie. And he's like, kill me, please. He's and my favorite character my in this whole thing. Favorite part of this movie is when he shoots himself in the head and it doesn't, doesn't kill die. him. And yeah. he looks at his gun. He's like, <laughs> and, and he just keeps shooting stuff randomly. <laughs> That was the funniest damn part of this movie. That was really funny. The rest of it didn't really get to that height for me. Did, did you notice in that scene where the cops show up? Um, so Mimi is trying to teach Psycho Gorman crazy ball, yeah. like the rules of crazy ball. Yeah. And Psycho Gorman is dressed as Alan Grant from Jurassic Park. Wait, did I miss this? How did I miss a Who is? Psycho Gorman. He's dressed with like the hat and the the, the scarf and like I didn't pick up on that. Oh, either. hold on a second! I don't think that's Alan Grant. That's a stretch. No, he didn't no, have no, a no, no, no. It, it was basically the exact same outfit that Alan Grant shows up at Jurassic Park in at the beginning of the movie, mm. and the the filmmaker did that specifically as a nod to Jurassic Park. I got. I didn't pick up on it. Oh, holy shit! He did. <laughs> <laughs> I got a picture on my phone of that very scene. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Alex God likes damn. it now. Fucking <laughs> five star movie. It probably, <laughs> probably makes him hate it more. I wrote in my notes no. that I want to know who the target audience for this movie was. Jude. Because yeah. I wrote, yeah. who is this target audience? It's this, not kids. Is, is this an after school special for people that are in hell? <laughs> that's that's kind of what I took at this. It's like if 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 I have, if I have to go to hell after I die. Just make me watch this movie. Yeah, I, I on a see, nonstop I, loop, I, I, and I that would be worse. I don't understand why you guys have so much hate for this movie because <laughs> this movie bad. is hilarious, and I loved it. Um, the the writer director is Stephen uh, Kostansky. So basically, like his background was as a makeup artist specializing in prosthetics. So like mm. all the the monster and alien and like prosthetic and creature effects in this movie are really creative and really cool. Um, it's got a great sense of humor to it, and. It, the concept of this movie was basically for Kostansky. He was like, as a kid, he was like, what if Skeletor was my best friend? Mm. And that was kind of like the genesis of this movie. Well, that would have been better. <laughs> you don't know that. I do. Because that no, was just fun. like, like th this movie, number one, it's very creative. But number two, like I, I, I kind of personally love stuff where like the the people the main characters are like bad guys because mm -hmm. I, I always find bad guys more interesting than good guys i always and, root for the bad guy yeah <laughs> and and there are no redeeming characters in this movie like like when you when you say all the characters are awful it's true but there are varying degrees of awful mm -hmm. <laughs> and the fact that psycho Goreman is basically this irredeemable monster um i think is just absolutely hilarious because like you know he just walks around like someone who like would would kill everyone and he's constantly subverted by this like an annoying little girl yeah and it's hilarious in fact um when we were watching this i kind of uh uh compared it to um space cop from red letter media okay because it kind of had the same feel and the same type of humor to it and in fact uh rich evans from red letter media, from red letter media uh he does a voice cameo in this he's the voice of death trapper Mm. Uh, who's part of the uh, Paladin Obsidians? Or uh, right, come and try. Yeah. Was that the part where assassins. they're in space and they're looking? The people no, it's are... when they come to the forest and they're all fighting each other. Oh, yeah, the yeah. ones that come and try and kill the, the Power Gorman. Rangers. Thing. Yeah, the Power yeah, Rangers yeah, characters. Yeah, awesome. yeah. So, so Death Trapper is the thing that has like all the body parts and it shoots blood out of its yeah. its cannons. <laughs> so and and as, at a certain point, like Psycho Gorman punches like the little porthole at the front of it, and you hear this Rich Evans. Oh 
my god! <laughs> and, and when that, when it happened, I was like, "Did they did they just like rip, rip like, off like Red an, Letter uh, Media?" And oh my god, from Red Letter Media! And it turns out Rich Evans actually like voiced that that character. That's so great. I was like, "Oh, like I, I love this movie." <laughs> That's pretty. Funny. Kadish was like, "Oh my god!" Oh my god! <laughs> I know Kadish is a huge fan of Red Letter Media, so I can understand like those guys' sense of humor lines up very much with this movie. Oh yeah. So I, I get why he would like this, and he would be drawn to it. For me. There's just not enough there for me to hook on to. It's, it's, it's too grating for me to like enjoy it. There's moments I enjoy. There's a couple things here and there that I enjoy. The freaking fishbowl brain dude. Oh yeah, he was funny. <laughs> he fucking killed me, dude. Yeah, I, I actually laughed at that. It was yeah. the only time of this movie I laughed. Yeah, that was one was like, of the times. That yeah. was very Mars Attacks. It was great, yeah. but it was the moment that made me laugh was when they were watching something on their holographic screen. And it was like a moment where Psycho Gorman like murdered somebody. And you can tell it's a hand puppet. Obviously, oh, yeah. it's a hand puppet. And you see the dude just curl the mouth in and it like, what? It like looks at the. I laughed at that point. I did. There's a, like, there's several moments where that, I'm like, I want to like this movie. The moment where Psycho Gorman in the very early uh, part of the movie where he escapes the grave and he goes and he kills those two guys that are like homeless or whatever. Yeah. That was a pretty horrific. Just, like punks. Yeah, they're just thugs. punk kids who like threaten them and he just like massacres them. That was funny. Well, that was when I was questioning who this movie was for. That was super gory. Yeah. Yeah, but also the, the, the point is like no one in this movie, you can't root for anyone. No. And that's the point. Like the guys that he killed had just got, they they had just come from like a home invasion where they killed some old man for no, no reason. Yeah, yeah. I just, this movie did nothing for me. I'm with you. Nothing. I wanted it to be more. I, I, like, <laughs> more what? Like, <laughs> more i wanted it to be more gore i wanted it to be more cheese like that scene in the forest with the zombie cop i wanted the whole movie to be like that <laughs> like, and and it wasn't it was kind of a roller coaster ride for me so i actually wanted to like this more than mm. i did but because i wanted more of that cheesy creepazoids aspect mm. i actually think that um like to, to me there's so much wonderful humor in this that it, it it's kind of like if if you enjoy the Evil Dead two movies and stuff like I that, did not. like like, <laughs> well, okay. What what I'm saying is, if you enjoy those types of movies, this yeah. is the type of film that you're you're going to love because it is a horror movie. It's very gory, but it does like some cool world building. Like mm -hmm. they, there's this whole scene where Psycho Gorman talks about like his origin story, and then like the little girl Mimi's so bored with it that every time he starts talking about like you know his previous experience, she's just like boring and like <laughs> it, 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 it like cuts away, and um. You know, there's and this, like the whole thing was he was enslaved. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and and there's this great gag about how like to give someone a warrior's death, like he eats he's, them. <laughs> like, you know? And 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 so like every time like like he vanquishes a foe, he's like, You fought well, I should give you a warrior's death. And they're just like, No, don't. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Uh, and then, like he like literally eats them. Yeah, his whole body opens and up. Then, like, and like the next time them. you see him, there's like just gore from his mouth all the way down yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of things that I I feel like I should have liked, but the yeah, character the, the characters the, killed it for the, me. The kids let him in their band, and he's like their drummer. And uh, stupid. And, and they have <laughs> yeah, this, that was th dumb. this really dumb song that's extremely catchy. You know, <laughs> like catchy. Yeah, catchy. Oh cause, yeah. Because because like they bring it back at the end as Not like catchy. a slow ballad, and they're like. I'm the don't heck don't don't stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Psycho Gorman gets like into it, you know. Uh, and that's how he finds out what love is. Yeah, he's like, is this love? <sighs> but but my favorite scene in the whole film is with the dad, and the dad ha just had a fight with the mom because he he's like, yeah, I'm gonna need you to pick up some more shifts at the pharmacy because I'm not gonna go into work for like another. Oh three my weeks. gosh, dude! <laughs> you know, so let my pissed. hand heal. And, and 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 so like she basically she like you know kind of puts him in his place and he's taking a shit and and he's kind of like you know saying like what he should have said to her oh, like, yeah, during the yeah. argument and then um th this happens right after uh, psycho gorman is attacked by the paladins obsidian and he's dying and he needs you know someone to come pick him up and the kids you know they don't have a car so they're like, well, what are we going to do? And so Psycho Gorman astral projects to the dad in the bathroom. He's just this like disembodied head that like pops up and he's like, rah, and the dad like freaks out. And he's like, you must come find me. Ah! And then he like disappears. The dad falls into the bathtub and he's like, I don't even know where you are. And then the head comes back up and he's like, rah. We're at the corner of Elm Street and blah, blah, blah. Make a left at yeah, the yeah. church. Yeah, and, and, then the, and then he disappears and the dad's like, I don't know where that is. And then, then like the head comes back and starts giving him really 
detailed directions. Like, rah, go down to the second stoplight and then turn left and then uh, go until you hit the ravine. <laughs> like, like I, I really found that just immensely entertaining. Like, I, I laughed so hard at that scene. <laughs> and, and like, just little things like the, the dad being, like, so lazy, like, because the mom had to, like, fill in that hole in the backyard – because he acted like he sprained his wrist. No, he didn't act like that's what another thing that irritated me is when he was shoveling and the like, the uh, kids made the hole, right? The kids were the ones who dug well, the well, hole. No, no, Psycho Gorman clawed it, like created the hole as he was climbing out the ground. Okay. Um, but then like when the dad was supposed to fill in the hole, he acted like he hurt his wrist so he wouldn't have to do the work because he's super lazy. And so while the mother was out filling in the hole, he had to make dinner. And so he, just threw, microwave yeah, he just threw the chicken in the microwave and and everyone's eating it and it's like, this, this is kind of tough. And he's like, that's what brings out the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. I hated I just, everything about this yeah, movie. Yeah, I hated everything about his character. I, I, the appreci dad I appreciate that you guys love this movie on this side of the table. <laughs> but man. It's, it's a, a niche this, market. This, it's a niche I think market. this is one of this those movies that while you're watching it, it's not as much fun as it is as when like you're talking about it, like none of us enjoyed this the experience of watching uh, Creepazoids, know, if, but we all love. If we were watching about this it. movie in a group drinking while we were watching it, it yes. would be amazing. Yes, and I, I I just think that it's a hilarious. Movie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. I just wish I would have liked at least one character. Like I, I get what they were going with. Like everybody's there's nobody you can root for. I guess in this I don't movie. get it. I don't get it at all. But I just was like. It's cheesy co costumes with overblown gore effects. And I'd rather watch Power Rangers. This the bad guys felt like Power Rangers, they especially did. the the angelic um, monarch, whatever the chick uh -huh. was that the, like the Templars. The Templars that were coming to. She was very Power Ranger. -y. Ugh, like a bad Power Ranger though. Like but 90s. that's what gave it its charm. I, yeah, uh, from your perspective, I hundred percent un understand where you're coming from. That that that's what gives it its charm. For me, I'm just I I, I'm, I don't buy it. I'm, I'm I'm not into that niche market of like this is the type of I, comedy. I, 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 don't, I don't I don't I just, I just don't like movies like this. The zombie cop was the only thing that made me laugh. And and uh, the, the zombie and the, cop was you know, the zombie cop was funny and the stupid little but like so brain much, in a so jar. So much in this movie was funny. Like, like it, it's a genuinely entertaining movie. If you're not expecting it to be like a good movie, yeah, you know, yeah, like for it's, sure. it's, 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 I wouldn't call it good. I call it entertaining. Yeah. I went and, into this. And it's very imaginative. I went into this movie looking forward to this. I go, oh, this is going to be cheesy and fun. And there's going to be some, <laughs> some gore. And it was just a complete letdown. Would you have rather them taken it more seriously? I don't know. Then have the, more like Wolf Cop kind of yeah. territory? Probably. I don't know. Maybe. Like, this is pretty much on level with Wolf Cop. It's in the same no, genre. I disagree. I, don't know. I disagree. Wolf Cop takes itself more seriously. Well, Wolf Cop is actually. I feel like good. Wolf Cop fully immerses itself mm -hmm. in the Wolf Cop. This yeah. was just very middle of the road. This was I felt some. Like. This was some Power Rangers Rita Repulsa shit, guys. I just. <laughs> this was some nonsense. This was. This was. Hey, let's take these 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 stupid characters and gore it up, and let's have these. I I don't even know what they were trying to do. The characters just annoyed me. Yeah. The. the the dad annoyed me. The dad, the, the mom, son annoyed the son, me. The daughter, the, mom, the daughter, yeah. Every single one of them. They, they, the characters, there was nothing there. The characters that we're supposed to attach ourselves to, I was like, let them They're, all die. <laughs> yeah, I, I cared nothing about any of these characters. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Not one. even Psycho Gorman. It's, it's a like, metaphor oh, just, for American families. Well, today. maybe, but it's That's just a wasn't, sad wasn't metaphor. For me. <laughs> also, love how like like they they made a choice and they stuck with it. Which, yeah, which is basically Psycho Gorman's evil, and at the end of the movie. Even though you're like you're happy that like he he merged victorious, he then goes on to start just destroying the world, uh -huh. and and you're just like this is terrible, but it's also hilarious. Yes. They stuck. Yeah, I, I'll give them props for sticking I, with their guns. I you didn't know? think it was hilarious. Final thoughts. Final thoughts, Jude. What do you think? Um, do you suggest that people go watch this? I do, but I don't think you should watch it alone. Okay. Uh, have a few drinks. Go into it knowing that this is not a twenty million dollar budgeted movie. I hope not, <laughs> but I think it's, it has its charm. And if you like this type of genre, you'll come out of it with, with being glad that you watched it. Um, I don't, I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's really fun to talk about after the fact. Okay. Out of five body parts. Um, I give this a, uh, two and three quarters, uh, <laughs> 
intergalactic assassins. Okay. <laughs> Two and three quarters. That's an interesting number, Kadish. I know. Well, I didn't. I, <laughs> I, I was disappointed because I wanted to like it more than I did. Okay. So I really wanted to give it three, but because I was disappointed, two and three quarters. Okay. Kadish. I would give this a solid three hunky boys. <laughs> uh, th this movie is very imaginative. It's very funny. I like the fact that like there are no redeemable characters in, in this movie. Uh, they're, they're just all varying degrees of bad. Um, it kind of speaks to my sensibilities. I think I said before that if you like movies like Evil Dead 2, Bad and, taste. And, and characters like Ash, you know, who's just like a self-absorbed jerk. Um, like, like this is the type of movie that you'll enjoy. Like, like I, I really liked what I saw here. I, I'm, I'm interested to see what Stephen Kuskansky uh, is going to do in the future. And, and I, I actually want to check out some of the other movies he's done now because of this. And uh, I just had a blast watching this. I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I obviously liked it more than all you guys did, <laughs> but uh, it was just, it, it's a guilty pleasure movie, I think, because it's not something for, sure. for everyone. But like, if you're like a schlock horror fan, like it's something that like really kind of appeals to you. And I love the concept behind it as well. And I hope they make sequels to this thing. <sighs> yeah. I can understand where you're coming from, from your perspective, bad taste, things like that, like creepazoids, like this is up that alley. So if you're into that kind of thing, go for this it. This movie is much better than those movies though. <laughs> Agree. Except for um, bad taste. That's a classic. For me, I'm going to give it two stars um, because it did make me laugh a couple. What's wrong with two? Two's not anything. It made me laugh twice. Strong. Two stars. The, the Skeletor dude inside the fishbowl with the funny face and then the, the cop that shot himself in the head and didn't die. I'm not going to give movies credit for a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's me. Two stars. Um it's not something I'm into, but if you're like Kadish and like Jude, and if you like this kind of thing, I think you'd probably enjoy it. So what about you, Vader? Um, this is zero stars. This is a... This is... I'm not even giving it a star. This is a pile <laughs> of shit. Wow. Yeah, don't 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 waste your uh, life. Okay. Don't waste any minutes of your life watching this. <laughs> it's awful. It says the man who liked Death Stalker. Yeah. Well, don't, don't waste your one hour. There's and no boobs minutes. in this says, movie. Says the dude who likes bad taste. <laughs> hey, the entire oh, continent talk. of New Zealand. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for our review of Psycho Goreman. Uh, stay tuned in just a second. We're going to be talking about Willie's Wonderland starring Nick Cage. Um, before word. we get there, real quick word from our sponsors. All right, welcome back, everybody. If you want to support the podcast, go to saltynerdclub.com and become a patron. There you will find a myriad of different tiers where you can give us all kinds of cool, or you can get all kinds of cool merch. And uh, You can give us cool stuff, too. You can too give us cool want. stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a P.O. box? Yeah, sure. We, <laughs> we, can, we can get box. one. <laughs> yeah. But no, if you support the podcast, you'll get some cool stuff in return, exclusive podcasts, behind-the-scenes photos, all kinds of awesome stuff. So uh, consider becoming a patron and help support the podcast. All right, guys, let's talk about... Willie's Wonderland, Wonderland, starring Nick Cage. This I had such a fun time with this movie. Jude, take it away. Same. 2021 Willie's Wonderland, with a runtime of one hour, 28 minutes, had a budget of $5 million. What do you think it's brought into the box so far? <laughs> I, I hope more than $5 million. That's awesome, though. I didn't know it took that much money to make this movie. <laughs> well, that was all in Nick Cage's yeah, pocket. That's, yeah, exactly. So this just came out this like a week ago. Yeah, week, yeah, it's yeah. brand new, brand yeah. brand new. Came out on Friday. So yeah. spoiler warning going wow. forward. We're so, watching the movie that new. So mm -hmm. far, it has made $118,000. Oh, a thousand. I thought you were going to say million. I was like, holy shit. No, no, no. It okay. 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 sounds about yeah. right. Mostly from people like us who have to watch it for a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Nicolas Cage plays a silent drifter that ends up being stuck in a town that happens to sacrifice strangers to a cult of psychopaths whose souls are stuck inside the mechanical animals inside a children's fun center, Willie's Wonderland. Willie, the head psycho, made a deal with the town's people to not kill them and their children if they brought him sacrifices to appease his bloodlust. Mm. So this movie um, spoke to me on a different level. <laughs> Because I'm of the ch the Chuck E. Cheese generation. Yes. And those goddamn things are scary. They are. They're terrifying. I don't like them. I never liked going to Chuck E. Cheese when I was a kid. It always freaked me out. But I was, oh, it's a girl party. It's going out with people. It, no. I'm done. I never go to those places. I don't take my kids to those places. I am not so, of that It's not generation. the same anymore. <laughs> so the fact that they kind of played on that trope with this Willy's Wonderland, they had those uh, 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 animatronic little things mm -hmm. doing the dance in front of the stage. Like They don't have those anymore, Chuck E. Cheese. They just have a guy dressed in a 
Chuck E. Cheese outfit and he comes out and does a dance and then he goes away. This movie is an hour and a half of Nicolas Cage beating the shit out of furries. He doesn't say a word. And I'm all for it. It doesn't have a word, single one. I of love it. That it's was genius. It's amazing. It's yeah. all just Nick Cage just acting with his yeah, face. About 10 minutes in, I turned to Jude. I was like, do you think they're actually not going to have Nick Cage say a single line of dialogue? Not a this single whole movie? line. And they don't. They nailed it. They, yes. they stuck like, with I, it. I have so much respect for them <laughs> making that choice and sticking to it that I, I'm like, I'm like, bravo. Yeah. yeah. I, like that, that's probably the best part about this movie is that they never have him say a single <laughs> I, line of I dialogue. Agree. I, I, agree. I thought for sure at the very end when he escapes with the girl and they're in the car together and he hands her the soda. Like, we'll talk about the soda in a second, but he hands her the soda. I thought he was going to say something. I thought there was going to be words coming out I of his mouth. Too. And it would have ruined it. And it no. would have ruined it. No, yes. it wouldn't have. They didn't do so it. If it was like some kind of like product, like well, drop or something. <laughs> that well, 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 see, your, your typical Hollywood movie, that would have happened. They would have they would have ended the movie with him finally saying something. And it kind of reminds me of The Mandalorian. Where, yeah, I knew you were going to say where like, like they, they keep his helmet on up until like the final episode. And then they finally take his helmet off, show you his face. And I lost so much respect for that show because it's such of a that. letdown when that happens. Yeah, be, because like they didn't stick with their creative choice. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this one, they saw it through to the very end. I kept waiting for that last line of dialogue, where Nick Cage, you know, finally says, says something. something. Yeah, and the fact that it never happened, I, I was like, Bravo movie. Yeah, yeah. Bravo. Yeah. What was 100%. the name of the soda? It was punch. called. It was called Punch Pop. Yeah, like if he would have said. Mm, punch yeah oh god it would have killed like it. no i don't i think it would have been funny no nah, i mean funny maybe but in retrospect the fact that they stuck to their guns and they didn't have him say a single freaking word in this movie like, nailed it i see i mean i i already know you guys like this movie more than i did but uh it, i hate dumb teenagers okay oh they were the worst part of this movie they were the worst part of this movie but but they were so horny. They all died. You know, <laughs> the and, horny chick. So, okay, listen. I'm just gonna go straight to that. There's a go scene. Ahead. Go there's ahead. a scene in this movie where the two teenagers they go into the you know the room and then they start banging. Yeah. Right. This is an R-rated movie. I want some titties in an R-rated movie. Okay. If they're gonna have sex and they're gonna sh show them banging, give me some titties. It's an R-rated movie, it's, but there's there was none. Yeah, this was, was bra. Like, this was like PG thirteen movie push up bra. But what 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 were they trying to do here? You know, at least you know, at least back in the Friday the Thirteenth movie, Jason movies, you know, we at least got some boobage once in a while. But, you know, <laughs> Wait, just, was this rated? I don't know. What I don't it was. have a rating for it. I don't it, think it, it was rated. Yeah, it was unrated. Unrated. So they could have. So, yeah, I they could have gotten away with it. I just, I don't know. I don't know what they were trying to do there. They had a couple of Moscow mules and they were real horned <laughs> up so and they had to I'm take the, care I'm of it. I will say that the teenagers were the weakest part of this movie. They were awful. They were terrible. Yeah, they were only there to get killed. Yes. It was, it was yes. obvious. 100% is why they were there. And they, and and they, they did were, and the they dumbest just, things possible. They were just tropes. So yeah. the they movie, were just dumb. The movie starts off with Nick Cage is in his car and he runs over these spikes in the road, mm -hmm. which are clearly laid there by the police in order to get people to be stuck in their town. Yeah, but the tow truck guy says that some kids stole it and put it out there to yeah. cause, right. cause chaos. Meanwhile, we flash to the kids and the main teenager, she's like trying to set fire to, to Willy's, Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland because she knows it's full of like evil dead, bad spirits. Yeah, her, her parents died there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Nick Cage is like stuck in town and he's got to get like his tires fixed all like all four of his tires blew out and he goes to like pay for it with a credit card and the tow truck guy's like oh cash only but you can work it off oh the price that he gave him too it was like oh it's gonna be a thousand dollars for everything get you back on the road i was like you son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> that's what was the worst part of this not that they were just no, gonna that, sacrifice that's him. not the worst part it was just like <laughs> ugh. i i because i i've experienced that before <laughs> anyway, so they make um, Nicolas Cage. Uh, I don't even think he has a name. I think it's just Drifter. The janitor. It's the janitor. Um, the janitor. So they drop him off at Willy's Wonderland. They're like, hey, if you clean this place up, we'll come back and get you tomorrow, and we'll call it even on the repairs on your car. Mm -hmm. So like, as soon as he gets in there, these animatronic uh, demons like start messing with him, and he just starts doesn't, taking them out. Doesn't give a and shit. honestly, if the teenagers had never showed up, everything would have been fine. He just would have killed all of them, and then he just would have been sitting there sipping on his punch pot. Yeah, and that would have been fine. In the me. morning. But yeah. these teenagers break in because they need to save him, and they just systematically get killed one by one. So do you think the inclusion of the teenagers 
was a positive or negative for this movie? I think it was like an intentional gag. Yeah. Because like each one of the teenagers is such a stereotypical horror movie like mm -hmm. trope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That they were included specifically because of that. Like the guy who wrote this uh, movie, uh, uh, Geo Parsons, um, you, you know, he he wrote this the script and it it got on this thing called the blood list, which is basically like a list of very popular unproduced horror movie scripts. And he even went out and did like a short film version of it um, called uh, Wally's Wonderland, I believe. Starring Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> but the crazy thing is, is that once it got up on the blood list, Nicolas Cage actually read it and he was like, I want to do this. And so it was Nicolas Cage. fantastic in it. This is the best movie Nicolas Cage has done in a long time. I agree. He's so good. 100%. And like Nicolas Cage is such a good actor that like he does so, and we've talked about this before, like he does so much with his face that he doesn't even need to speak. And it so rings true with this. Like he doesn't have one word of dialogue, but he is acting his ass off through the whole he thing. Yeah. And he's so believable. <laughs> There's a moment where it's kind of a shtick in the movie that it gets building and building and building and they pay it off at the very end where he has to take his breaks right the guy was like hey make sure you take your breaks every you know it's good to to rest and then start working again after that so he has this little timer and every time his beeper goes off he just stops goes takes stops, a break stops what he's doing. drinks one of his punch pops his punch pop. and then plays pinball machine and then goes about his business and it it kept getting to the absurdity level where like yeah. oh he's stopping for his break stopping for a break oh he's stopping for a break and there's this shit going on over here uh -huh. they're like in the middle they're like mid murder <laughs> yeah and he's just like oh. like it's him and a girl gotta go and he like hands his weapon to the girl and he's like gotta take my break <laughs> <laughs> and he goes and the it pays it off gloriously with the final break that he takes he plays the pinball machine and he gets the high score and he breaks the little the number goes from positive starts, to negative and he starts dancing <laughs> and he, does, he puts his fists in the air and he's like yes it was just like it was it sold it so much i this is what i wanted from psycho gorman i yeah. wanted somebody to root for i was rooting for nick cage this entire movie and he never once let me down it was so much fun to watch him just kick ass and he, play this goofy little character. He was definitely character. the highlight of this movie. Well, what's and, what's interesting about his character is is like we never get a backstory to him, but we get little hints. Like we see dog tags hanging from his rearview mirror in his car, mm -hmm. so we get a sense that he's got some type of military, military. training. But then, like when he when he kind of goes to the Willie's Wonderland, and you know the the guy who owns it's kind of explaining the job to him. And he's looking around, he's seeing like their graffiti, like kid killers and stuff like that. And then he looks up at the, he kind of lowers his glasses and he looks up at the, the cartoon version of, of Willie. And uh, it's just kind of the slow zoom. And you get the sense that like, he knows that this is a setup. Like he knows that this is a trap and he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. And and the whole thing with the punch pops, it's like, so the, the, they're like energy drinks uh, that say like, you know, it's like, it's like a, uh, in fact, I even wrote down what was on the, uh, the, Thing. It's, it's a fistful of caffeine to your kisser. Uh, that, that, that's what's on the cans. And so like every, every time. I wish someone would describe me that way. <laughs> I got you back. There's a new t-shirt coming guys. <laughs> Saltynerdstore.com. Put that on your Twitter bio. <laughs> um, so, so like you get the sense that he has to take these breaks in order to uh, energize himself. It's almost like Popeye with his spinach. Yeah. Mm, yep. Uh, and so, like, if he if he misses taking these these drinks, uh, you know, he's going to be at a disadvantage mm -hmm. because he needs to stay awake. He needs to stay alert. He needs to stay, you know, um, you know, kind of powerful. Yeah. And uh, you know, at the end of the the movie, the final confrontation is basically he literally beats Willie with the cans of punch. <laughs> like, 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 like he puts what what he has left in a bag and just starts beating him with them. And uh, it's hilarious. Yeah, it's awesome. I, each fight scene that he has with one of these animatronic things is it's so much fun to watch. It's the, such the, a, like a... Go ahead. What's up? I was going to say the, the animatronics didn't play well in my What? Life. Oh, that was great. Oh, dude. No, I, I know that they were supposed to be animatronics. The motor oil coming but, off of them when he's but, beating but the they, shit out they, of them. They, they just look like people in college. Well, that's what they were. But they yeah. look, look, look like in people in college uh, mascot outfits. Yeah. And I think it's really so. like... I don't know, like like how you said, like when you went to Chuck E. Cheese as a kid, those things are creepy. Like being an adult now, you're like rooting for someone to beat the shit out of those things because <laughs> you're right. They are really creepy. Yeah. I never took my kids to Chuck E. Cheese. This is a, if, well, this is probably why you don't like this movie. But no, I, I like watching it and, and each fight scene is a glorious 15 minutes or so, however long it takes for him to beat him down. The first one was funny because 
It can't. It comes there, out of nowhere. It comes out of nowhere, and it and you can tell that the characters that are in, embodying these like matronic, matronic, whatever the heck they are, like expects them to freak out, uh-huh. right? Like they're so used to people just being scared shitless that they're like, "Haha, we've got the upper hand." And when this thing's like, "I'm gonna eat your face off," and then he just punches it in the face, it kind of looks at him like, "What is going on?" And then he just goes full ham, uh-huh. crazy haired Nick Cage, <laughs> smashing the shit out of it, screaming, and it's like. I love. Oh, that. you're I at love, it. I love crazy Nick Cage. Crazy don't, Nick don't Cage. And then again, when he fights the um, the ape inside the stalls, yeah. and he stirb comps, stirbs. Oh my stomps. god, curb, curb stomps, stomps it into the urinal, yeah. and it's just like motor oil comes flying out of it. It was glorious. So, I I also love how the ma- the main girl live. Like, uh, you know, she's kind of giving him this exposition dump backstory. He just doesn't care. Yeah, no, just he care. just walks away. He's like, I got a job to do. <laughs> I, in fact, I wrote in my notes, I wrote, thank God for the exposition dump. Oh, yeah, it needed that. <laughs> it needed like, that. Yeah. But it was... A, it was did it need it, though? Did, did, does it need it? To, I think it better explained why these I machines the, were the alive. Premise, the whole premise. I, I, I thought that made the movie dumber. Huh. I mean, it did slow it down. It had, to, like, take, it had burn, to take a break. Well, it, it, these it just pointed out to me that these are the dumbest townspeople <laughs> on the planet. It just, it wasn't, I don't, I don't know. I just. Have any of you guys like, played um, Five Nights at Freddy? Yes. Mm-mm. No? Yeah, okay. I have. You have? All right. So that, that's, I think that's where the premise of this movie comes from. Well, th- a lot of the criticism of this movie is that it's a rip off of Five, Night, Five Nights at Freddy's. I wouldn't say it's a, I mean, I wouldn't criticize it for that because there's never been a movie like this before. So True, but uh, they're making a movie version of it with Chris Columbus. And so, like, a lot of the criticism out there has been like, oh, this is just a Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, if Five Nights at Freddy's, the movie is going to be this good, um, I'm down. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay with that. I, I don't mind that they took inspiration from that. I, I, I have a feeling it. it's not going to be very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to have Nick Cage going ham on somebody. So. I mean, I, I like this movie way more than the last one we just talked about. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it's just... There's just something about this genre of movie that I'm I'm not into, hmm. and I don't, I don't really know why. I th- I swear to God, I thought you were gonna really like this one. Nah, I mean, it, I didn't dislike it, but I didn't like it either. I'm just kind of middle of the road about it. But I, you know, I I pick up on like weird things. Like it's like did did Nick Cage take a shower between every time he killed one of those things? He wiped his face off and changed his shirt. That's, they made it, a, it, it, it just, reminds me a lot of like how Ash operates in the Evil Dead movies. Yeah, I guess. And, so, and I like the the character of the janitor so much that I, I would watch more movies. I with would. Him I would at, too. In, in the with lead, no dialogue. With no dialogue. Yeah, they have to he maintain. Can never, he can never talk now. Yep. If they ever make another movie with the same character, even if it's not Nick Cage, cannot speak. No. No words. But okay, let's do final thoughts on this one. Uh, Jude, final thoughts on Willy's Wonderland. I loved it. Uh, this is a f- four and a half. You were going to say five out of five. I almost did, but <laughs> I didn't. Okay. And I mean, and I stand by <laughs> my choice. Um, so it's a four and a half um, animatronic creepy murder murderers. machines. Yeah. Okay. Um, for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I Kiddish, love it. Final thoughts. I really enjoyed this movie as well. Um, I, I have a feeling that this is going to be a like a cult classic type thing. It's going to be up there with like Evil Dead Two and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It, it's a very fun movie. The fact that it's Nicolas Cage, and the fact that he doesn't have a single line of dialogue, that's going to elevate it. Like like he's he's truly created the, this janitor character as, as like a mainstay of schlock horror, mm-hmm. uh, you know. And uh, I, I I would definitely give this you know. Three and a half fistfuls of caffeine to your kissers <laughs> out of five. So, like, I I would highly recommend this movie, especially to people who like Nicolas Cage and who yeah. like horror movies. I think yep. if this had been played by anyone else, it wouldn't have been as enjoyable. But because, like, we've watched Nicolas Cage movies like for forever, and so we know like what kind of an actor he is and what he's capable of. To so to see him in this like in this role in this movie that's like it's made a hundred thousand dollars. But it's just, it's so delicious. <laughs> and he, and I mean, it's because of him. Yeah. Vader, final thoughts. I, I understand <laughs> where Jude and, and Kadish are, are coming from here, but this is not my kind of movie. I really appreciate Nicolas Cage in this. I thought he was great. 
And that's the only reason I'm giving it the two stars that I'm giving it. Two stars. I'm giving it two stars. <sighs> the rest of this movie was just that hurt. Not good. I hurt my stomach a little it bit. It was not good. <laughs> so, I mean, it, I'm not into these culty, okay. wannabe cult horror movies. That's fair. I mean, it was fun. It had its moments. Teenagers pissed me off. There was just, I don't like animatronics movies. They, you know, with these, oh, the possessed puppets thing. It's been done many times before. And, um, but, you know, Nicolas Cage was good. I, I, I enjoyed his performance. I thought it was good. And I can totally see this movie being one of those cult classic movies for sure. So, yeah, just it's just not my thing. I'm giving it two, and that's what I'm sticking with. Okay. So I'm going to give this movie five out of five. You're because right. wow, five out of five. It, Get the it fuck. did. This is not an Indiana Shut Jones. Up. Level Shut, movie. Not everything is Indiana Jones. I want to give a five out of five because it did exactly what it set out to do, and it did it flawlessly. I agree. It, it, everything that it meant to do, it was done. I I was rooting for Nicolas Cage from the moment he stepped on screen. Even the schlocky teenage characters that were kind of annoying, they had a purpose, mm -hmm. and they served that purpose, and then they were done with them. They didn't hang around too long. They weren't. All the scenes that they were in were like short and concise. Okay, these guys are going to be idiots for five minutes and then they're going to die. Done. And it like never got brought up again. So the, the pay, setup and payoff with the punch cans, the setup and the payoff with the pinball machine, everything about this movie, it, it was like perfectly set up and done. And I just enjoyed it from beginning to end. Nick Cage elevated it. Like you said, if it was anybody else, probably wouldn't have worked as well. But because it was Nick Cage and yeah. we know who Nick Cage is, and he didn't speak a single freaking line in this entire movie. <laughs> it just was like raises it to intensity, a different level. Intensity, intensities. Yeah, yeah. So I, I say five out of five just because I think it was done. It did exactly what it set out to do and it did it flawlessly. So I highly recommend people go check this movie out. If you're into that kind of genre, if you like Vader and you're not, this is not really your thing. If you're not into that niche market, probably not for you, but for people like us who like that kind of thing, it, it's perfect. So go check out Willie's Wonderland. All right, guys, that's it for today's podcast. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you would like to support the podcast, don't forget, go to saltynerdstore.com. You can get some cool merch like the InGen shirt, or you can get the I Have to Stop You So I Don't Stab You t-shirt that Jude's wearing right there. All the money that you give to the podcast goes directly back into it so we can buy new equipment and make better and better content for you to yeah, enjoy. So I can actually get a camera that works. Yeah, so you can get a new camera <laughs> that works. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, around the table before we get out of here, where can we find everybody on the social, starting with Matthew Kadish? Well, you're going to me first? Yeah, I'm going to go to you first. I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H. And you can also find me on uh, my Amazon page at kadishbooks.com. Right on. And Jude, where can they find you? You can find me at I am Jude Juju on Instagram and Twitter. All right. Matt, uh, Matt Vader? You can tell me how big of a moron I am. <laughs> at Matt Vader 74 on uh, Twitter, YouTube, and some of the other things. Right on. So yeah, I'm Just losing Google. my voice. Google Matt uh, Vader 74. We've been talking yeah. for like five hours. Yeah, so huh? it's like, I'm getting hungry. Uh, yeah, me too. All <laughs> right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, share the podcast with your friends and help us, uh, you know, get to more ears. All right. See you later.